Welcome to Fine Art at East Norfolk Sixth Form College. My name is Lindsay Carlion and I'm the curriculum team leader for the arts and I also teach fine art. I enjoy working with a variety of materials and I'm keen to explore the potential of how far materials can be manipulated to identify their functions and constraints. I enjoy working in three dimensional forms and I'm equally interested in drawing, painting and printmaking. Brian Smithhurst also teaches fine art. He is an expert in digital processes and has a wealth of knowledge on illustration and animation. Julie Bolas makes up the rest of the teaching team for fine art. She is excellent at drawing and has a vast amount of knowledge about drawing for documentary purposes and has a broad range of skills working with mixed media. In terms of the course, we've broken it down into three distinct areas to support your fine art practice. Firstly, we will get you exploring experimental approaches to help you build new skills with drawing, painting, mixed media and sculpture. Next, we will get you trained using the creative thought process to help you develop complex ideas. Alongside this, you will learn how to record relevant information from historical, contemporary and cultural sources. Finally, there is the personal creative inquiry. This is where the majority of the assessment comes from within the year and is made up of four assessment objectives. AO1 involves developing ideas. You will develop a personal and focused investigation demonstrating critical understanding. AO2 explores the potential of materials through a variety of techniques and processes. AO3 is about recording ideas and observations. Observations will be recorded through drawing, writing notes, taking photographs, and you can also use audio and film. You will also learn to be reflective by understanding how your work can be improved. AO4 is about bringing together all of your findings to create a final outcome. Your final outcome will be personal and it will be fully tested to ensure that it communicates what you intended at the start of your project. You will also make connections to all of the sources you have, you have used to inform your final outcome. Each assessment objective is worth 25%. Fine art goes well with a number of subjects that we also have on offer at East Norfolk. For example, English literature, history, politics, psychology, media studies, film studies and other art and design subjects. Here you can see some examples of students' work. These examples show paintings using acrylic and they're very expressive in the way in which the paint has been applied. It's difficult to see in these images, but there's lots of mark making involved. These examples show a different approach to fine art. The image on the left shows a portrait of a student, as you can see. She's been covered in powder paint, so it's more of a performance piece, quite abstract and quite experimental. The image on the right is quite graphical. As you can see, it's very controlled, quite abstract, and it's been produced by using acrylic paint. And the student was very interested in trying to create an illusion of depth on a flat surface. The image on the left is an example of a piece of sculpture that a student has recently worked on. She has sculpted this using concrete, which is primarily an incredibly hard and robust material. It's incredibly strong. During the setting process, she has wrapped a, a leaf around the sculpture to suggest that the material looks quite soft and malleable. To the viewer on first inspection, it looks like this could be quite inviting and quite soft to look at and to touch when in fact it is actually quite strong and quite sturdy and very hard to the touch. The image in the middle is produced by using Inco dyes. It's a light sensitive dye and it's been exposed to ultraviolet light by using stencils which have been cut out using wooden letters. It's trapped the light where the light is unable to actually penetrate through those letters and it's then created this, this wonderful stencil-like image. The image on the right is a drawing that a student has produced interested in spatial awareness and architecture. 
he started to look at the ways in which he can incorporate design, shape, form, structure and function into eventually a three-dimensional design which would be placed into an environment. Many of our students go on to study fine art in higher education. As you can see, this slide shows an example of many universities in which our students have gone on to study. Not all students feel ready to go on to university straight after their A-levels. Therefore, we do provide a level four programme, which is a foundation diploma in art and design. Throughout this year, students learn to become experts within their chosen specialism. So if you think that university is not necessarily the right option for you after your A-level, it's worth bearing in mind that you can do a pre-degree programme with us before going on to university a year later. There are many careers that can be on offer if you study fine art. On this slide, there shows examples of possible careers that you may be interested in, but there are many, many more. Fine art is, has lots of transferable skills, which you can cross over into other careers. If you're interested in engineering, then fine art is something that can support you within that career. If you're interested in architecture, again, fine art is a very strong subject to take to help you pursue that career. If you are interested in studying fine art and you'd like to know more about the opportunities and the careers that you can go into, then please do get in touch with me. I'm quite happy to speak to you um, individually so I can help you um, make the right choices about what courses you would like to take with us. On the next couple of slides, you'll see some frequently asked questions. The biggest question that is always asked is, do I have to be good at drawing to take fine art? Honestly, no, you don't. You will be taught how to draw using a range of techniques and approaches during the skills buildings weeks. You'll also be taught how to look and observe and see things. And you'll be recording a lot of information directly from life. You won't be recording any drawings from photographs or from magazines and you won't be copying any artist's work. Everything that you produce will be your own work. So we will be teaching you lots of ways to record observations. It doesn't matter what skills you come in with to begin with. We will help you build on those and we will introduce you to new ways of working. What materials will I need to buy for this course? We would like you to have some basic materials, but we will be providing you with a wide range of specialist materials whilst at college. It would be good for you to have um, basic materials such as a variety of different graded pencils, a putty rubber, a set of paint brushes and a fine liner. When you join us in September, you'll be given a list of other basic materials that we would like you to have. But we will also be going through all the materials that we will provide for you. We also have a very well stocked shop at the college where you can buy all your art materials. These are excellent materials that you are paying a fraction of the price for as if you were to buy them in town or in the city. So please do make sure that you buy all of your items from the art shop because we know that they're a good value. We know they're a good quality and you're not having to pay out for as much as you would if you were to go into the town or city. Can I study fine art if I didn't take GCSE art? You can, however, we do want to make sure that we are putting you on the right level course. We do need to see that you have some basic skills, knowledge and understanding about fine art. Therefore, you would be required to produce a portfolio of work to show us your skills so that we can make sure that you have this basic level of understanding. So for those of you that haven't studied GCSE art before and you would like to do art at AS level, you will need to do your portfolio for us. You would need to produce a minimum of 10 drawings from a still life demonstrating your understanding of the use of line, tone, mark making and colour. And you can produce those drawings in any drawing medium that you wish. So it could be pencil, it could be a biro, it could be fine liner. Is there a lot of writing involved in fine art? There is some writing involved in fine art. Uh, you will learn how to talk about others' art. 
you will be looking at artists' work and you'll be analysing their work and you'll be comparing their work to yours. You'll be encouraged to make connections between their work and your own work. And the way in which you will do that will be through um, analyses. So you'll be writing quite a bit about the artist's work and making those connections. If you feel that writing is not your strong point, support will be available for you so that you're able to learn about the structure of, of the writing, but also to expand your critical thinking and your artistic vocabulary. Will you get the opportunity to work with artists? Absolutely. We have a great connection um, with artists and we organise workshops for students to participate in. We have a very close working relationship with NUA, which is Norwich University of the Arts, and we quite often have them coming in and running workshops for students as well. So you will have a great opportunity to work with practising um, artists and other practitioners um, who are quite specialists. So it could be illustrators, could be graphic designers, could be photographers, and you will learn lots about those industries and learn how those artists are making a living. On the next couple of slides, you'll find some really useful links just to help introduce you to fine art, so it helps you understand what fine art is about. There's a couple of links which will give you information about the art world and lots of other artists. So they're well worth a look. The very first link is very much about mark making. I'd like you to read the information that's contained on that link and to help me assess where your skills and abilities are with writing, I would like you to write just a maximum of 300 words where you're explaining why you feel mark making is important in art. I'd like you to select an artwork by one of the artists that's mentioned within the um, information so that you can then start making some connections between their work and mark making. There is an activity I'd like you to do in a moment. You'll see a short video of me showing you how important mark making is uh, and how you can create interest in marks. So this is quite a good example to help you start tying in some links to work a little bit further down the line. If any of you have seen Grayson's Perry's Art Club, I highly recommend you watching that again. But for those of you who haven't seen it, do make sure you watch it. There's some really interesting and insightful information about what art is and the meaning behind um, art. So do take a look at that. Likewise, all the other links are very useful. So please take your time to have a look at those because these will be setting you up for um, putting you in a good position to start the course in September. You can find us on social media. We have a Facebook page, so please go to Facebook and just type in East Norfolk Sixth Form College and there you'll see all our regular updates about what's happening across college um, and so on. The art department have their own Twitter and Instagram page. So with Twitter, you can find us at, at East Norfolk Arts and Instagram is at East Norfolk Arts as well. You can contact us by our mailing address, our phone number or our website. And if you have any particular questions about fine arts or the arts in general, then please do not hesitate to get in touch with me. I'm Lindsay Carlion and my email address is lcarlion at eastnorfolk.ac.uk. Hello, I'm going to show you how to create some interest in mark making just using simple ingredients that you have in your kitchen at home. Um, I'm going to be working with coffee and tea and I also have some food colouring which can also create some interest in marks. What I'd like you to do is to go around your kitchen and collect as many different tools um, that you'll be working with. So kitchen utensils. Um, so I've got a whisk, I've got a pastry brush, fork, spoons, I've got skewers and cocktail stick that will all help me to make some interesting marks. So what I'd like you to do is to get yourself some coffee. You will need to use warm water so the coffee granules do dissolve 
And what you might want to experiment with is how much coffee you put into your jar um, compared to how much water. This will help you to think about the various tones that you'll be able to capture using coffee. Um, and the same with your food colouring. So what you can do is just use it so it's highly concentrated, straight from the bottle, um, or you can add water to it, which will help to dilute that colour and make it um, quite faint, if that's something you want to experiment with. So I'd like you to be as creative as you possibly can, just by using the tools uh, that you can find around your kitchen and uh, really have fun with it. There is no right or wrong in what you do. So I'm going to start off with the brush and I'm just literally going to dab the marks onto the paper. Now, if you don't have sketchbook paper at home, that's absolutely fine. You can just work with um, any envelopes that might come through your door from junk mail. You might have lined paper. You may have um, any other bits of scrap paper lying around your home. That's absolutely um, fine. So there's my first mark making experiment. As you can see, as I hold the paper up to you, you can see that the uh, coffee starts to run down the page. You might want to encourage that. So please don't be precious about what it is you're working with. Have fun and see what you can come up with. So just using a fork, dipping it into my coffee, I'm then starting to draw on the paper and see what marks it can create. So I'm going for a cross hatching type example here, which I'm sure some of you would have experimented with during your art classes. And as you can see, there's the cross hatching. I've got a skewer here, a wooden skewer, and I'm going to dip that into the coffee and I'm just going to dot about the page. And I'm also going to dip this into another coffee that I've mixed up, which is much, much weaker. So you'll see that there's, it'll come out much paler than the, the coffee that I have been using. The great thing about skewers is that you have the blunt end to work with, so you get an interesting mark, or you've got the pointy end, but obviously do be very careful if you're using that. So if you want to use the pointed end, obviously you can start creating very, very fine, interesting marks. So they can be quite delicate and, and quite precise. So if you want a bit more control over the marks that you're creating, the point will allow you to do that. So I'm going to go back to the dots. And I'm just going to keep layering them up to see what I can get from all those lovely tones. Okay, so that's what I've got so far. So the, the tip of the skewers, as you can see, very, very faint, but does allow you to work with a very precise um, control. What I've also got here is some cookie cutters. So I've got a plate of coffee which I am now going to put the cookie cutter into and I'm going to just pop that onto the paper and create an interesting set of circles. I can layer them up so there's multiples or I might want to think about organising them so they're a bit neater. I do have another cookie cutter which is slightly bigger so again, you may want to experiment with the scale of the tools and utensils that you're working with. Another interesting thing about the cookie cutters is that you can actually drag the coffee using the cookie cutters. So they don't have to remain just as these lovely circles. So as you can see in the centre there, I've started to drag the cookie cutters down. And as you can see where the, the coffee hasn't dried, it's starting to run, which again creates some interesting uh, mark making. So over here, I've got some other examples that I did. You can see that the coffee has changed color as it started to dry. So you can start to see a bit more of the variations in the tones that has been um, worked with. 
And then another example is this. So have fun with it, experiment with it. You can't go wrong. Allow the coffee to do whatever it is you would like it, it wants to do. And don't worry if it starts to feel like it's going to be really expressive. That's absolutely fine. What I've got here is some examples of food colouring. So using exactly the same utensils, cookie cutter, whisk, the um, brush that I've got, I've just applied the food colouring to the paper. So I've got some more paper here and I'll just go through some of the experiments with some of the tools just so you can see how the food colouring offers various tones using colours. Now the only colours I've got is pink and orange but it doesn't matter what colours you have just use whatever you have around the home and be creative with it. So again working with the fork dragging that food colouring across the page to create interesting marks. So I'm going to give the whisk a go and see what interesting marks I can get with that. Okay, so that's the brush, that's working with the fork, and that's working with the whisk. So I'm going to give the skewer a go so I can get some lovely dots happening in there as well. You can also, if you wanted to, drag the skewer. And again, you can work over those marks so you can start thinking about layering them as well. So how far can this colour last whilst it's on the skewer before it starts to really fade out. I can use it quite some time before it starts to go very very pale. The other thing that I have got which I haven't shown you yet is working with tea. So some interesting experiments you can do with this is literally just dropping the tea bag onto the paper to create interesting marks. And again, because it's quite wet, it is going to run. But again, that could be quite an interesting part of your mark making. As I've got quite a dark coffee, I'm just going to put some of that into the wet area where the tea is, just to darken those tones up. And then I'm going to hold it up so it can run and bleed however it likes. So here we go. You might want to give it a bit of a shake to encourage some of those stubborn marks that aren't running. And then you might want to change direction. There we go. So have lots of fun with it. Play about with it. Once you've created your examples, why not go onto Instagram and include Ian uh, Arts hashtag so you are able to um, share your creations and I can then like and comment on your work. So thank you very much for joining me. I hope you all have a wonderful summer and I look forward to seeing you all in September. Thank you. Bye. Right, you've seen me have a go at some mark making experiments, now it's your turn. So, the materials you'll need is a variety of kitchen utensils that you can make marks with. Be creative, grab anything you can that you feel will make some interesting marks. You'll need some cups or mugs or containers of some sort that you can put your coffee, tea or food colouring in. Paper, remember this doesn't have to be sketchbook paper. This can be scrap paper that you've got lying around. It can be junk mail that's come through your door, lined paper, etc. 
Um, so again, be creative and try and find any bits and pieces around the home that you can use to make marks onto. And you will also need coffee, tea or food colouring. So the next important thing to do is to get creative and have fun with what you are doing. Using the kitchen utensils, explore as many different possibilities as you can in order to create marks using tea, coffee or food colouring. What I'd like you to experiment with is movement. Think about the different types of movement you can apply when you are creating marks. Some movements can be very quick and rapid. Some movements might be quite slow, considered and controlled. So we can have a contrast between these very fast, rapid, quick movements and something that is quite uniformed and quite controlled. Be expressive. Allow the coffee, the tea or the food colouring to run and bleed. Don't worry if some of your experiments start to blend into each other. That's absolutely fine. You might end up finding something quite interesting from allowing that to happen. So don't feel that you have to control the mediums all of the time. Allow them to do what they would like to do. Think about layering those marks as well. We're looking at a variety of tones. So remember to experiment with the ratio of how much coffee you place to water so that you can explore those variations in tones. So let's have a look at trying to get some tones that are quite dark and then have a look at tones which are quite light as well. Here are some examples of artists mark making. As you can see, they're very big, they're very bold, they're very expressive, highly energetic. Lots of movement has been involved within these um, artists works to create the multitude of marks that you can see. And here are some other examples of different artists works with slightly different approaches. So these are slightly more controlled. As you can see, Hans Hoffman's painting is much more controlled where there are um, specific shapes that have been organised. So you might want to try a combination of quite loose marks against some very geometric controlled shapes as well. Please remember to share your mark making experiments on Twitter and Instagram and tag us into your posts so we can then like and comment on your work. We're really looking forward to seeing some of the experiments that you come up with and we can't wait to give you some feedback. Thank you very much.